In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Inkscape to create these simple tool icons using nothing but basic shapes, the nodes tool, and a couple of path effects. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I'll do in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So I'm going to start with the simplest tool here, which is the screwdriver, and then we will work from there. So let me move this off the page and I'll zoom into 100%. And I'm going to start off by grabbing the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and, draw, click and drag to draw a vertical rectangle like that. Then I'll grab my selection tool. I want to right click this and go to duplicate. And I want to move this at bottom arrow up about that far. And then I want to convert this to a path by going to path and selecting object to path. And I'm going to go to the nodes tool and I'm going to select these two nodes right here and I'm going to add a new node between them. And then I'll select these two nodes right here and I'll add a new node between them. And then I'm going to click and drag over these two middle nodes and enable the transformation handles with this setting up here in the toolbar. And then I'll hold control and shift and click and drag this transformation arrow about that far. And now I will grab the selection tool and select both of these objects and go to path union and now it's a single shape. So now I'm going to open up the path effects menu by going to path and selecting path effects. And the path effect I'm going to apply is the corners path effect and I'm going to choose the chamfer setting. Now I'll grab my nodes tool. I'll zoom in on the bottom of this object, select these bottom two nodes and take this handle and pull it in like that. And then we could finalize that by going to path and selecting object to path. Now I'm going to grab my rectangle tool again and I'm going to click and drag to draw a rectangle about that size. And I want to select both of these objects and let me center them up on the vertical axis. So I'll open up the align menu by going to object and selecting align and distribute. I want to set the relative to to last selected and I will align them on the vertical axis like that. Now I'm going to select just this object, make sure it's converted to a path and then duplicate it and take this bottom arrow and bring that up about that far and grab the nodes tool, select these two nodes right here, add a new node in there. Same thing with these two nodes right here, add a new node. And then I'll take these two nodes and hold control and shift and scale them out like that. And then while still holding control, I'm going to click and drag this down about that far. So now we have a flathead screwdriver. So now I'm going to create a couple of rectangles going in the center here. So let me grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to set the fill color to white. And then I'll just click and drag and draw a rectangle in here. Grab the selection tool. Let's duplicate that. Hold control, move this one over here. Select both of those rectangles and unify them together by going to path union and then hold shift and click on the object behind it and make sure it is centered on the vertical axis and then go to path difference. And now we can zoom out and take both of these objects and go to path union and we have a screwdriver. And if you want to change the length of the handle or the screwdriver, you can go to the nodes tool and you could select these nodes and hold control and move them up or down as needed. Same thing down here. If you want to shorten this handle or lengthen it, just hold control and move those nodes up and down like that. For the next design, I'll show you how to create this wrench. So let me move this off the page and I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to set my fill color as black and I will click and drag to draw an elongated rectangle like that. And then I'll round the edges using that handle. And then I will convert this to a path by going to path, object to path. And now I want to right click this object and go to copy. And let's grab these circles and ellipses tool and hold control and shift and click and drag to draw a circle. And I'm going to 
grab this selection tool, come up here, make sure you have this lock icon enabled where it locks the width and the height so that objects scale in proportion to each other. And then we will go to edit, paste, and choose paste width. And now I will make this white and hold shift and click on the rectangle and center it on the vertical axis and then align the bottom edges like that and then click off of it to deselect everything. And I'll take just this object right here and I'm gonna hold control and shift and scale that down about that far. And now select both of them and go to path and select difference. So now I'm gonna grab my nodes tool. I'm gonna to select these nodes up here I'm gonna hold control and move this out a little bit. I want this handle to be a little longer. And assuming you still have the transformation setting enabled, which you should have if you were following along with the previous design, I'm just gonna hold control and shift and grab this middle arrow and scale that down about that far. And now I'm gonna create a circle to place up top here. So let me grab the circle tool. I'll set the fill color to black and then I'll hold control and shift and click and drag to draw a circle grab the selection tool and place this over the other object. And let's make sure we have them centered on the vertical axis. And then you can click on this and hold control and scale this up or down as needed. I'm gonna make it about that big. And then I'm going to grab the stars and polygons tool. I'm gonna to choose the polygon setting and I wanna choose six corners and for the rounded to be zero and I'm gonna set the fill color to white, and then I'll come over here and just hold Control and Shift, and then click and drag to draw a polygon. Make sure to bring your cursor up, straight up, and that'll make it so that the corners are going up and down like that. We don't want it to be sideways or flat like that. We want the corners going vertically. And right about there looks good. I'm gonna center both of these up, Shift click both of them to select them, and then center them up vertically and horizontally. And I'll bring this up here. I'm gonna even scale this down a little bit. I'm gonna to go to path, object to path, grab the nodes tool and I'll take these nodes up top and hold control and bring them out like that. And now we can go back to the selection tool. And now I can just eyeball it and place this about where it needs to be. And I think right about there looks good. And if you have to make it bigger or smaller, go ahead. And once you're happy with the placement, select the circle and then hold shift and select the object beneath it and go to path union and then hold shift and click on this object and go to path difference. And now we're going to go to the nodes tool. Let's enable the live corner path effect. And I will select these two nodes right here and grab this handle and just round them off like that. And then I'll take these two nodes up here and I'll make them slightly rounded like that. And once you're finished, you convert that. You can convert that to a, bat, to a path by clicking on this button up here that says object to path. And zoom out. And there we go. There is our wrench icon. Now let's go over how we can draw this paintbrush. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. I'm gonna set the fill color to black and I'll click and drag to draw a rectangle. I'm gonna click this corner button up here to make sure that the corners are squared. And then I'll draw another rectangle beneath it like this. And I wanna make sure I have both of these centered. So let me select both of them and center them on the vertical axis. And let's convert them to a path by going to path, object to path. And now I'm gonna grab my nodes tool and select this rectangle. And I'm gonna select these two nodes down here or you know what, I'm gonna zoom in, let's not select those nodes. Let's just double click the path right there to add a new node. And then I'll double click the path right there to add a new node. And then I'll select those two nodes and I'll click this button up here that says insert new nodes into selected segments. And then take just this node right here and hold control and bring it up about that far. And then I'll take these two nodes right here and hold control and shift and scale them in a little bit. And then I'll repeat this process over here. Double click to add new nodes select both nodes, add a new one in the middle of them, and then take just this node right here, hold control, bring it up about that far. We'll make this one longer. And I'm gonna take these two nodes and scale them in as well. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I wanna make sure that the gap between them is somewhat consistent between these two. And then I'll create one more over here. So I'll double click on the path to add a couple of new nodes. 
select them, add a new node between them, and then take just this one node and hold control and bring it up about that far. And then I will scale this in as well. And grab the selection tool. Okay, so now we have the, bot the bottom part of the paintbrush done. Let's create the handle now. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool. I'll click and drag to draw a rectangle over the center of this object. I'll hold shift and click on the other rectangle and make sure we have it centered vertically. And then I'll take just this rectangle and I'm gonna make these edges rounded as well. And I will convert that to a path. Let me grab my nodes tool, take these nodes right here and then hold control and shift and scale them down so we get something like that. And then I will hold shift and select both of these objects and go to path, union, and I'm gonna go back to the nodes tool. We're gonna to add the corners live path effect here, this button right here, and I'll select these two nodes and I'll take this handle and bring that out like that. And then I'll take this node right here, hold shift and take this node right here, and let's round those as well, slightly. And then hold control and click and drag them down about that far. And once you're finished, you can click on this button to convert that to a path. And now we have the handle. So I'm gonna put a little circle in there. Let me grab the circle tool. I'm gonna to set the fill color to white, and then I'll just hold control and shift and click and drag to draw a circle in there. And I wanna make sure I have that centered vertically. And then I'll just position this where it ought to be. I'm just eyeballing it. Okay. And now I could just select that hold shift, select that, and go to path, difference. And now we can select both of these objects and go to path, union. And just like that, we have a paintbrush icon. Finally, we'll go over how to create this saw icon. So let me come down here. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. I'm gonna to set the fill color to black and I'll click and drag to draw a rectangle like that. I want the corners to be sharp I'll convert this to a path. And then I'll grab my nodes tool and I'm gonna select these two nodes up top and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna click once to add a new node between them and then I'm gonna click a few more times because we wanna add a lot of nodes in there. Something about, about that many nodes is good. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press escape to deselect those nodes and I'm gonna hold shift and start clicking on every other node. We wanna select each node after the other. And with those nodes selected, I'll hold control and click and drag them down about that far. And this is gonna make the serrated edge of the saw. And now with the select tool, I'm gonna to click on the object so that we get the rotation handles. And I'm just gonna rotate this counterclockwise ever so slightly, maybe about, maybe about that far. And this is gonna make the bottom edge of the saw. So I'm gonna make this a different color for now. I'll just make this red. And I'll grab my rectangle tool and I wanna set the fill color to black. And now I'm going to temporarily enable snapping, which is this magnet icon up here. So I'll click on that and then I'll snap to this corner right here, click and drag and then snap to this corner over here in the end and then release the click. And now we could turn off snapping. And I'm gonna grab my select tool. I'm gonna scale that up and I'll scale this down. And let me just lower this beneath the red object. And in fact, I will make this object white so that we can see the shape that's forming here and then I'll adjust the height of this as needed. And once that's set, I'm gonna click and drag over both of these and go to the Shape Builder tool, and I'm gonna click on just this segment right here, and then go back to the Select tool, and now we have this part of the saw. So now let's create the handle. I'm gonna grab the Rectangle tool, set the fill color to black, click and drag to draw a rectangle about that size, and you could even adjust adjust it if needed. I'm going to make it about that big. And I'm going to convert this to a path. Grab the nodes tool and I'm going to go back to the path effects menu and I'm going to apply the corners path effect and I'm going to use the chamfer setting. And I'll select this node right here and then just make that corner flat or cut off like that. And then I'll convert that to a path by clicking this button, object to path. 
And now what I will do is I'm going to remove the fill color by clicking on this X down here. And then I'm gonna apply a black stroke by holding shift and clicking on the black swatch. And then I'll open up the fill and stroke menu by double clicking that stroke stripe down there. Click on the stroke style menu and I'm gonna make this a lot bigger. Well, first off, I wanna make the join have squared corners and then I will continue making this bigger. This is going to represent the handle of the saw, so we need to make this fairly large. I'm going to change the size of this as I do this. Maybe a little smaller than that. And I'll grab the nodes tool. I'm going to add the corners live path effect and take this object right here or that node and then just use this handle to round it like that. Maybe a little more. Convert that to a path. And once that's set, we can grab the nodes tool again. I'm gonna select these two nodes right here and I'm gonna come up here to where it says break path at selected nodes and click on that. And that's gonna break this up into separate objects. And now we just have to go to path and choose break apart. And now we'll have separate objects. Before we deselect anything, come over here to the join, or no, to the cap, and choose the elongated cap, which is the square cap, and then click off of it. Now I could take just this object right here and go to the nodes tool and hold control and bring these nodes out about that far. Now we can select both objects and go to path, stroke to path, and then path union and then I'll grab the nodes tool and I'm going to take these nodes right here and hold control and move those nodes out about that far and then I'll apply a corners life path effect and take these two nodes right here and round them off like that and now we can convert that to a path zoom back out select both objects and go to path union and there we go, we have created our saw icon. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.